welcome back to Makeover 2010. As we complete week four of Makeover 2010, we have some great news to report. Uh, we've heard from the geothermal looper who should be here just any minute to begin drilling the loops for the geothermal heating and cooling. I'm actually leaning on one of the posts where the geothermal loop will be installed and will go approximately 200 feet below me. I have a stake on either side, so um, these should be installed within the next 24 hours. And another piece of good news is that Rude Heating and Air will be able to come in next week and install the central heating and cooling system. Hello, my name is Chris Buckman. I'm with Buckman Well Drilling, and we're here today drilling three 200-foot uh, geothermal wells for this home here. Uh, we've already drilled the first hole. Uh, the drilling here in the northern part of Arkansas where we're drilling is uh, rock drilling, drilling through solid limestone. So the method of drilling we're using is uh, air rotary with a downhole hammer. And uh, the first eight foot of this project is just clay and gravel with uh, boulders and then it goes into solid limestone for the remainder of the hole uh, down to 200 feet. Uh, once we reach the 200 foot depth, we pull our drill stems back out of the hole and then we run uh, the geothermal loop into the hole, which is the black pipe you see behind me back here. That's the loop. We run that into the hole to the bottom. And then we run, uh, there's another black line here that is a, called a trimming line. We run the trimming line to the bottom and we pump bentonite clay to seal the hole and to grout it in. And uh, as we pump it, uh, we blinds at the bottom, we pump it in and we pull the line slowly back out as it goes until we fill the hole completely to the top. And then once we get it full of grout, we pull a short piece of casing out and that hole's completed. And that's uh, one complete hole. All right, here's an energy efficiency fun fact about the makeover house. You may remember that the old windows that we took out had the five pound counterbalance weights on each side of the window. So in order to accommodate those, builders had to build a trough. So these would move up and down in the trough depending on what, where the position of the window was. All right, what you're seeing now is some low expanding foam that we've used to fill the trough that accommodated the window weight. So we thought we'd go ahead and measure just to see how much uninsulated volume existed around each window. So we measured the, the width, the height, and the, and the depth and calculated 960 cubic inches on both sides of the window, totaling almost 2,000 cubic inches or 13 square feet of uninsulated uh, void where air could transfer both inside and outside the dwelling. The guys behind me have been very busy this week. Uh, we've installed brand new storm doors on the house. Uh, we've actually began to complete the finishing inside the house by installing sheetrock over the areas where there's foam insulation. So stay tuned for further updates.